This short uh, tutorial is designed to explain the differences between the two versions of the way uh, the chart is drawn in this uh, example called uh, stock chart. So I'm going back to the source code. What we went over in class uses draw chart two. So let me do this for a second. Let me um, comment out number one and release number two. The way we uh, saw in class and we analyzed it is when, let's make sure that it works. Is when it draws the chart with using, you know, move to and line to, line to, line to, line to, line to, line to. But the other one, which some people might find even more graphically pleasing, is draw chart one, which is really what uh, this tutorial is all about. So I'm going to comment number two and instead release number one. They are exactly identical, those two JavaScripts. Uh, the only difference between them is that this one, instead of drawing lines, draws rectangles or bars. Let me concentrate on what makes those two scripts different because they are virtually identical, except for a few little things. Uh, the calculations are the same, I'm going to this i'm going to go quickly over the whole thing uh everything here is the same as uh the other javascript and uh, uh calculating the width and height and the um, ratio between them um extracting my data by the node and extracting the canvas width and using the canvas canvas width to um to calculate the uh, the width per node, everything is the same. Uh, building an array of all the prices, up to here, everything is the same. And of course, uh, applying the math to find out the maximum, the minimum, and the average. So far, absolutely no difference. The differences start in the function that we repeat over and over that draws one node. And one node is going to be instead of a line, uh, is going to be a rectangle. So here comes the differences, right here. Um, this outer fade toggle is not relevant. I'm going to comment it out. Um, once we calculate the width per node, to remind you, the width per node is how much do we need to move from left to right based on the number of nodes we got. Like if we got 10 nodes, we need to divide the width of the canvas by nine. So once we figure that out, here are the differences. We declare a gradient because I want to fill up those uh, rectangles with a gradient. So I create a gradient, which is going to be a linear gradient. Let, now look at where we're positioning it. Zero, zero means that it's going to be the top uh, left corner. Um, zero means that it's going to be at the very top and or its uh, width is going to be zero, but its height is going to be the canvas height. What does that really mean? That it's a uh, gradient that will basically, basically cover the whole canvas. It goes from top to bottom, from zero to canvas height. Canvas height is 400. So it's going to fill up the whole canvas. And the beautiful thing is that some of those rectangles don't fill up the height of the whole canvas. So some of them are going to show only the bottom of the gradient and only the very tall ones are going to show the whole gradient. The gradient is really covering the whole canvas, but depending on the height of the rectangle, it's going to reveal the ones that are going to have like nice and green at the top are only the tall ones. So in order to have a gradient, we need to have colors. And that's those are the next lines. So my gradient we're going to add at the beginning or at, at the bottom, basically. Uh, sorry, at the top, it's going to be a semi-transparent green, uh, 0, 255, 0, and 0 0.4 transparency. The middle color is going to be a semi-transparent blue, and the uh, final color at the bottom, because it goes from top to bottom, is going to be semi-transparent red. And finally, we are assigning to my paper this fill style called my gradient. Now everything that's about to be drawn is going to be 
uh, using that gradient. Uh, it's going to be filled with that gradient. So it's time to make, remember this is a loop that creates node after node after node. Each node is now going to be, instead of a line, this is the biggest difference, instead of a line to, it's fill rect. Now, this fill rect is going to have next x and next y as its top left corner. Instead of a line that goes from next, y, uh, next x to next y, it's going to be a rectangle with its top left corner in the next, nef, next x and next y. If we look at it, this is the next x, next y, here, and here, and here, and here. Because hopefully you remember that to draw a rectangle, we need to supply it with four parameters the x and the y of the top left corner, then the width, and then the height. So let's look at the width. The width per node is how wide each rectangle needs to be so they all fit. Now, why am I doing negative four? Negative four is negative four pixels to create a tiny little bit of a gap between them. Here's the negative four. I just thought it looked cool. This can be played around with. If, for instance, it was not negative 4, but negative 40, my rectangles are going to be thinner with 40 pixels in between. What could be even more interesting is what happens if I do a plus. If I do a plus, each one of them will be 40 pixels too wide, and they will overlap each other. Since they are semi-transparent, that actually might look kind of cool. And it does. Right now, each one of them is width per node plus 40 pixels. Uh, let me return it. You know, if I don't do anything, if it's just width per node, you know, plus zero or, plus, you know, plus nothing, they're going to be flush right up against each other, which, you know, right now it's hard to see them. So I thought, you know, how can I separate them either by making them a little too narrow or a little too wide, and that will accentuate the differences between them. So this is why I did my negative four. And of course, you can feel free to change that. Now, the next thing, of course, is if we told it how wide to be, we're going to tell it how tall to be. Now, if we just tell it to be as tall as the next y, it's going to start from the top. Because numbers in the canvas always start from the top. So if it was only next Y, look at what would happen. It would draw perfectly good rectangles, but upside down. See what, what's happening? Instead of this one being the tallest, it's the shortest. And if this, you know, it, it's basically drawing them um, with the wrong height. So what I'm doing is saying, oh, I need the tallest one to be the canvas height minus the next y. In other words, if you're really tall, you're close to the top. So you're going to be basically almost the canvas height. So this way, it starts from very close to the top and extends all the way to the bottom. For instance, if the next y is uh, you know 10 pixels, what does that mean? That it's a really tall price. It means that it, the the, the height of that uh, rectangle, let's see an example. Let's say, do a save. Let's look at the highest one. This one is only 10 pixels away from the um, top of the canvas. So is its height going to be 10 pixels? No, it's going to be the whole canvas minus 10 pixels, which is what it says here. And that is really it. Um, everything else is absolutely the same. The only uh, thing that makes the, the text go back to being white is this line. After we draw the rectangles, we go, okay, I don't need this kind of a, a gradient fill anymore. And I'm declaring a new fill style, which is basically an almost opaque white. It's white, but only 0 0.8 um, transparency. Uh, the reason I made it almost transparent is, again, because I like to play with transparency. Everything else is exactly the same as the previous script. One last thing, an interesting uh, combination, which might help you uh, when you do your uh, next assignment, which is, you know, the NASDAQ prices, also known as Unit 1 Project, is what if we use both of them? What if we use both scripts? If we use both scripts, we're going to have both lines 
and rectangles. The only problem is going to draw the text twice, but that's up to you to edit. But at least visually, it could be a very interesting thing. Let me refresh. The only thing that I would fix about this is that one of them needs to lose the text, and it's up to you to, to choose. But if one of them, you know, see how, you know, they both draw the time nodes and they both draw, you know, the, the price. Um, if you find where to comment it out, out of one of them, you can have what's called a combo chart, which could look, you know, pretty interesting.